Are you looking for a nice easy way to self-host your documentation or maybe even a static blog? Well, in this video, we are looking at MK Docs and I'm going to show you the whole process of getting started with deploying your MK Docs container, how you can configure it, add your pages, and then if you want, how you can make it publicly accessible as well. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. As I just mentioned before, in the, this video, we are looking at MK Docs and how we can self-host it in a, inside of a Docker container. Now, just before we get started, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the subscribers and everyone that's joined the Discord uh, community server. It's awesome. I uh, just wanted to note that I think like 90% of my returning viewers, not just like one-off viewers, my returning viewers aren't subscribed. So if you are one of them, it would be awesome if you could subscribe. I don't normally push this, but I've just noticed that when I, a video does get a fair amount of interaction with subscribers, it boosts how many people see it. So it'd just be really cool if we can get these videos out there to more of uh, people trying to learn how to self-host but enough talking let's get into mk docs so this is my mk doc so when it comes to the documentation for this and how it's all managed it's actually relatively straightforward you have one main yaml file that pretty much has all the configuration for your site and how it's all managed then all of the pages like you see here the about the docker containers and then all the sub pages under here are all just markdown files that you can define on how you want it to look like have code blocks and stuff like that and then you build it all, and then it creates it as HTML files that you can host however you like. But we don't have to worry about kind of building or anything like that. We can just use their Docker container that manages it all for us. The only things that we need to define are our markdown files. And then we have the container that's running and away it goes. The main thing when it comes to these static site generators and what's different between you know others and that are pretty much the themes that we're using. So MK Docs has a bunch of different themes you can use. So there's Cinder, Cluster, like you can just see them all right. But the one we're using and it's pretty much the biggest one that I know um, is material for MK Docs. You can see that their downloads is 3.4 million in the month compared to 231 um what three three thousand two thousand you know <laughs> material having 3.4 million is a pretty big sign that's uh yeah one of the the most used ones so when it comes to installing it there's actually a couple ways so if we come to the material mk docs uh website and if we were to click on getting started you can see here that they've got ways you can install it like locally using you know your python your pip package installer and you can just kind of do it that way but we're just going to do it all via Docker. We're just, we're not going to have to worry about Python packages or anything like that. We're just using a container that has all of the dependencies in it. And we just do the fun stuff. We just build our pages and we don't have to worry about building and, or anything like that. So I'm on my, on my uh, docs website. So here, there's actually going to be a page when you're seeing this video dedicated to how you can, you know, all the steps that you need to follow to get this all set up and all the YAML files you need to copy and paste and whatever. Uh, so make sure you check this out so you can just easily copy and paste uh, what I'm doing. So this is pretty straightforward. So if we come down to the main uh, documentation for the container, you can see they've got a straightforward command and you can just run that and away you go. Uh, but what we need to do is actually set up some files and i've actually i'm using a docker compose um yaml file for all of this uh, rather than just running the ad hoc command so that will also be in the documentation so rather than follow step by step here i'm going to take you through the process now on just everything you need to to get this all deployed so what we're going to do uh what the this one here that you see up and running, this is running on my main server, but we're gonna set up a fresh install running on my Raspberry Pi. So if I jump over here, so this is my Raspberry Pi and I've already made a MK Docs folder where everything's going to live for this Docker container. So if I do an LS, there's a Docker compose file here. So check out the docs link in the description. And that's where you'll find this. So if I just jump into that and have a look, you can see it's relatively straightforward. So we're looking for, we're using the MK Docs material uh, container image. Port 8000 is actually used on my uh, Raspberry Pi. So I've just changed it to 8005. Feel free to change that to any valid port that you want. Now the volumes, I'm just mapping this entire directory and then all the other commands and a more detailed breakdown is in the documentation uh, that I've got. So if you're keen to learn more, you can check that out. But this is all we need. So another couple of prereqs we need to do is one, we need to this time actually make the directory for docs for this Docker container. So we'll make that. So make sure you've, you've got that there. So it should look like this now. 
And we also need to make the uh, markdown docs YAML file. So if we look at the documentation, they're saying that that's what we need, mkdocs.yaml. So let's make that, so mkdocs.yaml and hit enter. And we need to put some stuff in here. And now I have noticed that they're just saying you just need to add this in here, but you actually need to add a little bit more for this to actually work, otherwise your container will error out. So this is the mkdocs.yaml file. So you can see there I actually have site name and then the theme. So that is all good. So I can save that and close out. So if I do an ls, we have our mkdocs.yaml file, we have our docs and we have our docker compose file, right? So that should be should all be all we need, right? So our docs folder is empty. So what's going to happen is when we run this using docker compose up hyphen d, it's going to create our container and we can make sure it's working just by, um, I have a command here somewhere to check the logs and we can see it's happy. Don't worry about this initial error. Uh, this was, um, I had a, a mistake in my <laughs> MK docs file, which I fixed, but this is the logs that we're checking. So we can see that the container is actually running now. Now don't get fooled by this if you are checking the logs. It's running on the internal port, 8000 on the container, but I'm using 8005 in mine. So we can go to our mkdocs folder um, location now. So if you're wondering how you get access to that, if we just nano the uh, docker compose file, remember it's running on port 8005. So IP address of your server on that port. So let's do that now. So I have a local DNS name for mine. So local uh tick docs dot local 8005 hit enter there we go so this is our mk docs of course there's nothing in here because there's nothing in those docs folder location and stuff right so i'm going to show you how you can just get kind of a base setup so here if we come back in we've pretty much got nothing right so what i want to do is actually just go into my mk docs and i'm going to add a couple bits in here right so this is a simple navigation so we're going to have a home tab and we're going to have an about section. So feel free to add this. So I'm going to save that. Now, if we go into our docs and I'm going to have to do a sudo nano and we'll do an index.markdown, which is the home page. And this is just markdown. You can use things like chat GPT or whatever to help generate your markdown. If you've got something you want to write or a code block and you want all the markdown, chat GPT is pretty good for converting all of that stuff for you. Or there's online converters, or you can just look up the documentation for writing markdown. So a simple one here, I'm just going to go, uh, this is the um, homepage. Did I spell that right? Yep. I have a microphone hiding most of my screen. <laughs> and then we need one more, right? So sudo nano um it was about.md and so this is the about uh page save that if we do an ls we now have those about and index markdown files looking at the mk docs you know we're saying hey look home page and about will go to these two markdown folders great now i can't remember if the docker container updates automatically uh but we can check so if I do a refresh, there we go, it does. So you don't actually have to worry about restarting that container. So now you can see we have a home and about page, right? Nice and easy. So for mine, how I've got my subdirectories and that set up, I'm going to show you, have this in the documentation as an example that you can follow so you can continue to build yours. And if you're after more um, examples than that, you can actually come in here and on the official documentation, they have how you can set up, you know, the colors, the fonts, logos, how you can set up uh, if you want to add in analytics. So you like Google Analytics, uh, all their plugins. They just have so much stuff here and it will take me ages to cover all of that. But this website is perfect for understanding all of that. But my documentation will have everything to get your container set up and to understand how you set up your sub pages and your navigation. Uh, but any sort of customization, come to here. A link in my documentation will take you to this page as well. And yeah, you should be all good there. So the next question is, okay, we have it running locally, but I want this to be public. Yes, awesome. This is where our Cloudflare tunnels come in and I'm not going to go crazy into detail with this because I have videos dedicated to that and I'll have a link somewhere in the corner which you can check out. But I will quickly show you it. So like I've always covered before, when you're setting up a Cloudflare tunnel and you want it to point to your container, all I have to do is 
add a uh, in my tunnel i just need to add a host name so adding a public host name i can click here and i can call this whatever i want so i can just call this uh youtube test and we'll put it on a domain name let's put it on um i don't know my alzim which is kind of a testing domain i have and it's on http and so ip address and port back to our tunnel paste that in 8005 is how i access that port save that and there we go so now if i click on this and click on this url there we go <laughs> i'm now self-hosting mk docs and it's publicly accessible it has ssl it's https and um it's all encrypted and secure that's cloudflow tunnels <laughs> it's, it's so easy uh again check out the dedicated video if you're keen on understanding how that all just worked um but that is how i would recommend to make this publicly accessible and um yeah self-hostable so just a bit of a debrief so we've got the docker compose file my documentation explains all of this you want to make sure that your mk docs yaml file has at least the site name and the theme to be able to get in there and then you can start building it out using your navigation all your files live in the docs so alias in the docs everything lives in here and this will just get bigger and bigger um, as you progress um, make sure you make the docs folder for whatever reason uh, docker doesn't create it for me for normally when you use compose it will make the docs folder uh, but in this case it doesn't uh, you need to make that first and also in the docs so if we just do an ls and we change it into docs you'll find that if you just try to change one of these files so if we just go nano index uh, as a as our standard user we can't it's owned by the container um, so we need to use sudo uh, or you can just change the permissions the uh, container uses but i don't mind just running sudo it's nice and easy to make those so all those files inside of the docs folder just use sudo and then um, nano or vim or whatever you're using to make the markdown files and then as soon as you make the change it's reflected in your uh your mk docs site so nice and easy <laughs> so that is mk docs uh pretty straightforward right we've gone through just setting up the container setting up the directories and that setting up your mk docs yaml file and adding some docs in there just to be able to create it and then cloudflare tunnel just as an example on how you can quickly get that deployed thank you so much for watching again if you could hit that subscribe button that would be awesome when it comes to just trying to get this community um going and i just know that so many people are watching and just aren't subscribed and i'm guilty of that as well i've got a lot of people i watch and i'm like realizing oh i don't even subscribe to them uh but it really does help especially when 90 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed so would appreciate that thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video have a good one and bye bye